Welcome back to Trainer Heads, people. Today we're doing a conversation with a trainer head, and I'm here with TT Finley. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Do you know, it's so funny because the last time we did this, like, it really went something like that. We did a review and that was the last time I think yeah. I saw you. Yeah. We saw each other. Covid got us. I know, man. No, Covid didn't years. get us. It didn't <laughs> it get never us. Got like, us. Not like that. It stopped like, us. Actually, I did, I did have Covid though. I did. I had Covid <laughs> yeah. twice, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, oh, but we Once. survived. We survived, yeah. like, thank yeah. God. <laughs> so many things to be grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. And like, let's talk about some of those things to be grateful yeah. for, innit? Might as well get into it. Yeah. So when we last met up, or when we did our joint review on the UNCs, yes. goodness UNC me, man. Yes. Goodness, when we throwback. did those, you're right. Um, damn, that's <laughs> such a throwback. Yeah. When we did that, you were at ASOS, or just leaving ASOS, Yeah. because this is TT from Sneakers in 60 Seconds, <laughs> And then you were starting a job with Laced. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, I was like doing sneakers at ASOS, but I just wanted to like go fully into sneakers rather than doing like all the fashion stuff and the more like general release high street sneakers and move into actual sneakers. So uh, yeah, I worked for Laced for like a year and a bit and just left like a month ago to go wow. freelance and do my own thing. So. Well, okay, let's get into yeah. what you're doing at Laced <laughs> first because yeah. there's so much that happened even mm -hmm. while you were at Laced that you were um, that you were up to so let's yeah. let's do a little chronological timeline let's let's start at the beginning so let's go back to the beginning of 2020 yeah so yeah. 2020 was kind of like looking to move on from ASOS um, and then as lockdown hit mm -hmm. uh, Nike released this um, they had like put an announcement out about like uh, Nike by you for London I think it was called Unseen London where they were basically giving the opportunity to 20 people in London to mm -hmm. create their own sneaker with Nike and I couldn't believe it, but I got picked as one of those yeah, people. How was, the process, <laughs> so, how was the process? Yeah, so basically you could only, you basically applied and you, you literally had like three sentences worth of words to say what you wanted to make your sneaker about. So it had to be super short and succinct. Um, and I knew because I was like really passionate about it at the time and still am, it was about, I wanted to make mine about like female sneaker culture mm -hmm. um, and representing that space in London. Um, so that was all I said. I literally just said like three sentences. This is what I'm going to do. Didn't hear back from them for like a month. And then I got a DM from them. And I remember it so well. I was sitting on my sofa watching TV and I just like got this DM and I was like, oh my God, it's actually happened. That's and I so was like seedy. screaming. Yeah, yeah. That's so seedy. Like, you know, you reply for something, yeah? And you yeah. get a DM, you're like, no, that's not Yeah, I, I literally <laughs> went on there. I went on the Instagram and I was like, this is definitely a scam. Thank you. And I went on like who they're following and like checked everything. And then I saw that they were following a couple of other people that I know. Were they even very were picked. No, they weren't verified, yeah, yeah. I don't think. Um, but like, they were, I think Nike was following them, so then I was like, okay. And then the people that they were following also were picked, because I knew like two other uh, people yeah. who were in the, in the selection such a small world um, and yeah I reached out to them and I was like is this legit like and they were like yeah I got yeah. picked as <laughs> and we were like oh my god so yeah it was like a big moment um, and then the process itself of like designing the shoe we only got like two weeks to do it oh, wow. um, and it was also like very limited colorways options so like um, you could either pick an Air Max 90 or an Air Max 95 and I initially wanted to do the 95 because that was like the first sneaker I bought for myself when I first moved to London and it was like had a special place in my heart um, but the 90 I still loved anyway because it's a shoe that I like grew up seeing and wearing and whatnot. So what made um, you go with the 90? So the only reason I went with the 90 was because of the colour options. So oh, okay. the Airbags 95 basically only had like quite muted colours. Like it wasn't really anything that I would wear. And like I love neon colours, which mm. as you can see is all of my work is yeah. basically all bright. bright yeah. um, and the Airbags 90 had some like bright colours. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. Um, and honestly, I had so many breakdowns, like <laughs> such drama. Which I was like, this is the only time I get to design this shoe. And so it was like the huge pressure. Was it that overthinking? Yeah. That yeah, this needs to be literally, perfect. yeah, and yeah. It went through. I like had a couple of options before I picked the one that I did in the end. Um, but essentially, what helped me was like I went back into like the archives and like looked at shoes that hadn't come out in women's sizes before, and that's yeah. when I started to think like this actually connects to my story, and like this is where I'm getting the inspiration from. So it took a, it took a few tries, um, and eventually I came out with the the shoe that I have. And I yeah. want to tell you something, yeah, and I and they haven't re-released them either, but when I would have I would have been in year three and uh, it would have been maybe my first or maybe my second Air Max 90 mm -hmm. so this would have been 
1998. Yeah. Wow. 99. Yeah. Yeah. No, 99. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Nike released these 90s. And I was so gassed to get them. And they were grey, like it was like a very soft grey. Yeah. And um, a teal, like yeah. a teal colour. Yeah. But it was only those two colours, yeah. 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 And it had like teal laces yeah. as wow. well. And your sneaker is the only one since I, yeah. since then. Mm -hmm. So that's going over 20 years now. Wow, yeah. Since then, 23 years, goodness me, I'm not old, just. <laughs> experienced um so yeah since then that has even got like that's got the closest mm -hmm. and it's, when i saw it i was like oh my <laughs> gosh it took me back like yeah, so, yeah oh that's i'm so and glad colors are green and pink anyway, yeah so oh amazing win. you won on the colors yeah. alone. <laughs> and night is being one of my favorite silhouettes so yeah like, yeah obviously oh, i think so you probably nice. saw it everywhere yeah i was sorry every day <laughs> hourly at one point I'm yeah sure. yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Sick, so if you haven't yes. seen it like you have to look at yeah is it power of the female power to the female power to yeah the female. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a cold, yeah. yeah. It's, a cold, it's, it's cold shoe. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. And yeah, definitely like ties back to like my love for like retro yes. runners and stuff. And it just like, yeah, I was just like I super happy yeah. to do it. So yeah, and that was that. And then um, there was from a whole there, campaign around it as well. Yeah, so I did um, basically started releasing. That's when I started like some people who like follow me will know that I release these graphics that are all like about like sort yeah, of very like big artists. statements. Don't yeah, just, like, <laughs> don't be so modest. Like, I just released these graphics. <laughs> You're an amazing artist Thank as well. You. How long have you been doing art for? Literally since I was like, could it could draw and write. Oh, so, like, so since so I was so a baby. I went to, like, oh, that's, yeah, that's I did it at uni as well. I did oh, fine so, art. Yeah. So, yeah. And so like painting and drawing, but like I didn't get into like graphic design and typography until later because my partner is a graphic designer. Oh, so, and wow. so through him, I kind of learned how to use You're like young, everything. So, yeah, literally <laughs> we've got, yeah, it's very like design vibes. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like, I here, yeah, touch. <laughs> heavy up. Isn't it? Yeah. No, but that is yeah. Great. So um, no, yeah, it was good. And uh, I, I, the first graphic that I released was like um, sneaker culture is often seen as a boys' club, but mm -hmm. we're changing that. Oh, we and that. that was like. Yeah something I made it about like I, I like, used the word we because I was like it's not just about me it's like I want everyone to feel this and everyone to like feel that they're a part of this um, and it's everyone's problem to tackle as well yeah exactly so um, that kind of went a bit like crazy that graphic like loads of people shared it and then um, obviously did like a video and I got some of like my favorite female sneakerheads within yeah. my community to come on and do like a little um, little video that I basically cut together and it was all just about like how powerful female sneaker culture is um, so this was with Nike as well so yeah how was like when it comes to the creative process of doing um, those kind of things like mm -hmm. how much control do you have on it everything so, so everything the only thing right that in. we didn't have yeah. control over was the obviously the colorway options like and the shoe yeah. we could only do like what what Nike gave us mm -hmm. but when it came to marketing the shoe that was all on us oh wow so like everything so that I did wow. yeah I produced myself like Nike didn't help me with any of that it was literally just all they did was give us the Nike swoosh logo yeah. PNG to use um, and they were like do what you want with it just yeah. don't like warp the logo or anything yeah. and then everything else was on us so like oh, wow. again luckily my graphic design skills yeah, really yeah. helped because I made it like a proper like legit I campaign <laughs> yeah I would have like tag your help me <laughs> literally but um yeah it was like it was it was good i think it like all of my like kind of skills came in because like it's from like copywriting i used to do copywriting and then like graphics and like art direction and everything like i was able to put together like a solid campaign, campaign that looked like, like an actual nike campaign and, exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah i kind of like and um, yeah social media i literally planned like the whole like rollout of it yeah. and i think it's a lot of people didn't do something like that to yeah. that level so like but we it had really still freedom out. so it i was really like fuck it i'm gonna go yeah. for it sorry for swearing no, but no, yeah no, don't <laughs> fuck it let's yeah. do it yeah like freedom yeah trust me, yeah because, literally I, I think yours really stood out um no shade to the other designers at all mm -hmm. but um the campaign around yours just gave it that extra i would say worldliness and allowed it to really like extend its typical audience mm -hmm. as well. So like, yeah, you're known as a person, as an individual. Yeah, Nike's known, but 
you doing the extra bits and yeah like other you made you made other people care about you mm -hmm. thank like, you yeah and you made <laughs> yeah. it easy to share that message yeah, yeah yeah whereas i don't i feel that i feel like a lot of the other mess i i can't lie i remember seeing all of the sneakers and being mm -hmm. like thinking um probably about about half of them i, I would wear yeah yeah but um the message behind a good few of them were good, but I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of their messages got lost. And yeah. the fact that yours, you know, was able to champion as strong as a message as it is, we know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm happy because, yeah. The, yeah, we need more, yeah, female sneaker culture. Yeah, for that sure. To be highlighted. Yeah. And I'm all here for it. I said it was in, to Steph as well. Steph, yeah. Oh my God, that was Steph's like leading was, it. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, was, was born. So yeah, exactly. You're doing it on a, from a, a different angle. And yeah, the other side. for sure. It's just necessary. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because Steph and I obviously both worked at ASOS and we were like, I think she started Women in Sneakers literally like a few days before my sneaker launch. Oh, so it was perfect because we just came together yeah, and she yeah. was like, I want you to be my first person on it, on the oh, on dope. the platform. Yeah, and it was yeah. like such a perfect, and I like just, it's so yeah. nice how we've both grown like together in the space. And like, yeah, it's yeah. just like, just doing really nice, yeah. Female sneakers, yeah, like sneakers, yeah. Well, the female sneaker culture, like yeah, for sure, thing. yeah. So, um, yeah, from, from the campaign, <laughs> what stemmed like what was the ripple effect from that? Like, what other yeah. things were you able to get involved in from that? Can you tell so, me more yeah, that? um, I think obviously, like, my partnership with Nike kind of like blossomed mm -hmm. from there. So, like, after the um, the, the shoe drop, they had me on like a sneakers live to talk about my shoe. Um, then they had me on another sneakers live a couple of months later. Mm -hmm. And like, then obviously later down the line, which I'll get to later, they kind yeah. of, we've obviously partnered together. Um, but then what I did on my own stuff was like, I realized that that graphic that I put out like for my shoe mm -hmm. had such like it spoke to so many people yeah. and then I started to feel like frustrated about other stuff in female sneaker yeah. culture so I started to just make graphics about it but yeah. this time I like took my name out of it made loads of different colorways of the graphic um, and just wrote down the words that I was feeling yeah. but then I was like I want it to be something that other people can put, post on their Instagrams yeah. and like shares if it's their thing and um, make it like a whole community kind of movement almost so like I did a couple of graphics I think the biggest one was like um we don't want women's exclusives we want inclusive sizing yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the other ones like make sneakers gender neutral which yeah, is like I saw that, yeah I remember yeah, those last two yeah. exactly so those ones kind of went I think the women's exclusives one went kind of viral and then high snobiety like reached out to me about mm -hmm. it and from there it kind of like there was a whole article written about like women who are making like waves in the space and I think it's actually like obviously like all of that caused like such noise but then obviously what Steph's doing what Julia uh, is doing with sneakers by women yeah. um Shikar mag like so many women in the space were all kind of like we're all kind of like sneaker partnering and yeah, yeah. sneaker sisterhood exactly and like Julia and everyone like they're all doing bits in their own little communities and I think it just kind of like snowballed and like I was just like a small part of that with everyone um it's just like perfect so I think timing, like exactly that. yeah, yeah it, it was just together. yeah and it's just so nice because we all know each other and we all support each other and we can't exist without one another and um like obviously real change has happened since we've started yeah, talking about it and like absolutely. i had like i've had calls with like nike design teams since then where they're asking me like what do you think of the product for like 2023 like is mm. this is the female consumer gonna like this and like me being able to actually like consult them on that on, like from like the point of view of women yeah knowing that it's like when they show me a pink shoe i'm like nah don't do that yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not gonna do it and it's like crazy to have that that impact and actually yeah. like do that and like it's I think yeah like, are there, were there women in the rooms before are there yeah are there a lot of women on that well side? no so like a lot of the lead leading people mm. on the female design teams are men um <laughs> which is crazy like there are women on like, on the really? teams but like, yeah it's like make it make sense, yeah like, exactly what? so it's like it's important that they're actually like tapping mm. into us now and like listening to us and I think Steph's done similar things with them where like we've given our insight and um yeah it's just like crazy like now that it feels like all sneaker brands and like whether it's retailers or brands are all starting to really like push forward that messaging for female sneaker culture but it's not just Finally. like literally and like now it seems like it's a huge thing but it's also the best part about it is it's it's not like let's get like a cool looking hype bay girl that's like literally like the perfect Instagram girl. Let's yeah. get people who are from Five, different backgrounds, really. different age groups. Yes. Like different sizes. Different sizes, exactly. Different like, heights. Yeah. <laughs> people who don't look like Team your typical 
exactly like, let's let's show it the small ones yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> but literally yeah. and it's um it's really nice to see that it's actually like a proper representation mm -hmm. now which is something we've all been shouting about for so long and something so, that's been needed from the beginning of time yeah exactly yeah. so yeah i think that's like been one of the best things to see just and be part of yeah. that that movement um so yeah and then obviously after that like aside from that I, my partnership with Nike is kind of a continuing thing yeah. um you can tell us about what happened in the, the, your first because there was multiple so <laughs> your first moment in Nike Town yeah, yeah so I had um the most not the most recent one but the one I had like just after Christmas was called everyone's welcome yeah. and it was basically my first chance to design product with Nike so um I designed uh, t-shirts, hoodies and patches for people to customise so like those are still available in Nike Town like I've got my own little glass yeah. box there which is cute oh, is um, and then yeah so it was like again like I knew that I wanted to like continue that message of like the bold graphics mm -hmm. and like the statements so exactly yeah. and then I did a couple of like illustration stuff to kind of like um, accompany it but like the main thing was like these big statements make sneakers gender neutral passion over hype etc um and that kind of went a bit mad as well like i think a lot of people i think the biggest moment like the proudest moment for me was when i walked into nike town and like the visual merchandising team had set up my space for yeah. me without like i designed all of the pieces to go in it but i didn't know how it was going to look yeah. when i got there involved in that exactly area. yeah and so i showed up and i was like oh my god it was just like my heart like i honestly wanted to cry yeah. it was just so and then when people actually showed up to the launch because I didn't think anyone was going to show up and I always have that no, panic, do, like do. <laughs> literally I do, honestly I've got such imposter syndrome so like every time I create anything I'm like people are going to hate this or no one's going to like care, it's always going on in my head and um, it was busy, it was day, busy, way, yeah, like, day, yeah. <laughs> yeah and that the was just weekend. like and the best thing, yeah the whole weekend was busy, it was like packed out and the best thing I think was like the kids that came through, oh. there was like a couple of like little boys who were like literally like 12 years old and I was like this is what we need for like the next generation generation yeah, yeah. like boys who are wearing like more women in sneakers t-shirts like that is just like that just Love made that, my yeah. heart sore it was so cute um but yeah it was just like a great moment so of course. yeah and i think yeah again like i know that it's ruffled some feathers mm -hmm. like within like nike and hopefully that it's making more impact and the more we talk about stuff like that it's like because it's gonna get better I'm just intrigued, more so because I haven't visited the States, especially not during the mm. pandemic, like since we've gone into that. Um, there's been so much movement with like women in sneakers when mm -hmm. it comes to the UK. But yeah. Also, is have you noticed it on a global I think aspect? I oh. think the thing that I've noticed most, and obviously I don't know because I don't like know the the communities within mm. the US as well. But like I've obviously you've seen like the whole thing about Jordan sponsoring like the women's WNBA yes. and like that kind of thing. Like that's another huge step to that. And like I'm not a huge like basketball fan. I like only appreciate it because of sneakers. Mm. But like. I think that kind of stuff is huge and there's amazing creators like female creators in the in the US that I've seen sort of post about working with Jordan, working with yeah. Nike and so I definitely think it's like happening but it's it's hard, it's like nothing's ever going to compare to the London community and the British yeah. community because we're all so close by and I think we just have this like amazing like relationship with each other that's like I, know, I, th I think they said like special. What, um, the UK itself could mm -hmm. be how how many American states? I swear, because like yeah. one, I think it can fit in oh, yeah, two like, or something. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So yeah, I yeah. can't imagine us really grazing the same Exactly. Time. But it's yeah. being different here, definitely, yeah. for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, oh my God. Um, because you also did something else after mm -hmm. your first debut at that yeah. town. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, so the most recent project that I did was, um, it was called Fresh and basically Nike came to me and they were like, we want you to do like another collection of like patches and apparel for yeah. like an activation in Nike town. Um, the theme is air and they were like just do what you want and so I was just like okay so this much is like the freedom, freedom. That's yeah so daunting. it was yeah. really daunting because I was kind of like and I was also told that this time I wasn't allowed to use any of my slogan slogans because legal oh, were like wow. okay. you're ruffling too many feathers basically which I was like that's actually really punk yeah, rock that is, <laughs> like, yeah, no, that is, is badass that's, that's what we want. I was like exactly I was Let's like it's good more. the fact that we yeah. the fact that it's done that to the yeah. point that I'm not allowed to use those yeah, slogans yeah. is like 
such a positive thing yeah. even though it's annoying but um and they still and not only that like a side note from that that i don't know you, you may have considered at a time but mm. just to even reiterate again now is that regardless of the amount of feathers you ruffled, mm-hmm. ruffled they still wanted to work with you again exactly and do exactly was, yeah that's it exactly so, yeah. yeah so that was like a great feeling mm. um so yeah this time around i was like I, t- I did like loads of different like ways of getting inspiration I guess so like I'll always go back into like my old sneaker books like mm-hmm. any archive stuff like old Nike ads even like ads from like other brands um, and like I'll even go into like random places that like don't have anything to do with sneakers just for like inspiration um, like one of the ideas I initially came up with is like those old travel posters that were like airline posters yeah. like I was like maybe I do something like that and then I was like no it's not the, that's not the vibe so like there's always about like oh because like air I get yeah it. exactly yeah, yeah. so there's always about like three or four ideas I have before I actually settle on one and um, I did also ask like my Instagram following like what does the word air mean to you I definitely without, yeah that. exactly I think I just <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. yeah, but like so many Space people came jam, up with stuff like, like yeah, random stuff that off. I wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, but literally it was like super helpful, and then I was like, okay, this is this is helpful. But then what I ended up doing was like, I was like, what does air mean to me? And I was like, for me, like Air Max is like the 90s and like I just remember growing up in the 90s and like never being allowed sneakers like or maybe have like one pair of sneakers yeah. for like four years or whatever and I would always see like the cool kids at school with like Air Max 90s or like oh, yeah okay. you were a cool kid <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> I was wearing like bands, yeah. Oh, you're lucky. You had the, you had hiccups. Yeah. Um, Sly plug, you know. (laughs) Literally. Um, But yeah, I just remember like that was like the glory years for me of air. So like I was like, okay, the '90s. Let's just go back in. And then I started to look at like old references of like '90s like hip hop culture and even just like TV references like Fresh Prince and like Clueless. Yeah. Um, And then even just like yeah stuff like in London culture like colors and like I looked at like carnival and everything and there's just like so much stuff that I was just like this is this is the vibe and it also was like a nice continuation on from the bright colors of the stuff I'd done before um, so it's on brand exactly yeah, yeah. yeah so um yeah so it was good and I managed to get like a couple of dodgy things past legal like the clueless and the fresh prince yeah. logos that I'd like redone yeah. basically um and, yeah exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I uh, did like a whole, um, I did like a run of prints as well that was like Peace Love Air Max. Um, and it was all just in like, cause I think cause it was like at the very beginning of this summer, I wanted it to be like bright summer colors. So everything's just like so like bright. Some of it even looks like, um, it reminds me of like, you know, like sweets that you used to get or like those like fizzy drinks you used to get when you were a kid in the oh, 90s. Panda Pops. It's like Panda yeah, Pops. Yeah. yeah, oh my God, literally them. Or like Frutellas or something yeah. or like, those sweets that like yeah exactly yeah. and so it's like I some of them it. yeah so I still, eat yeah. <laughs> I still do but um yeah so it was like there's loads of little like nostalgic references in it and I think it was just really fun to like do it was a challenge because I was like just kind of too much freedom but then I feel like I managed to do something that I was happy with and yeah it's a good and good how was project. it launching, launching that that was a crazy one because yeah. they gave me the ground floor of Nike Town. So yeah. like the moment you walk through the door, it was it was unavoidable. It was there. Like yeah. there was like these two ginormous screens, and then like one other big screen, and like my name was like all over it, and like all of my graphics. Uh, it was just like huge. But then they'd also like taken over like the Nike by You Cube on the second floor yeah. as well. So I had like two spaces within That's Nike sick. Town. Um, Did you have to go between as well? No, so like the activation was just on the ground floor, mm. but I obviously went between just mm. to kind of like check it out yeah. and like see what, what we'll they'd done with the space. Course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that one was pretty surreal. And like, I remember like FaceTime my mum and dad and I was like, like, mom, like, like his name. <laughs> Did you know you was gonna give birth to a star? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what, the last, my mum actually came to one of my Nike pop-ups and she made me write on the print that I gave her she made me write thank you for designing me as if like trying to take credit for everything I was like you're unreal like literally, uh, the, literally. Is that I know like, I know no, so your so mum can come to your like yeah. wow that's crazy that is she was crazy. like if it wasn't for me you wouldn't be you wow. so I'm like they always do that yeah it? just take like, all the wow. credit so yeah where was you when I needed inspiration I know mom? I know <laughs> so funny <laughs> So yeah. what's next then? What is next? Well, what can you reveal? Yeah, I mean, to be next? yeah, I was like, was now you're you're at um, 
you've left Lace now. Yeah. So what's the vibe now? So now I've decided like I'm finally making the leap into freelance. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of like set myself up like I've got my own business and stuff yeah. and so I'm doing like a mixture of um, creative work. I'm kind of splitting it into two spaces so like first one is like creative and artwork where I'm doing like going to be releasing like prints and doing more of my paintings and stuff nice. and then also like live art in stores for brands and stuff. So, um, so you guys can understand how yeah. much of a G artist she is. <laughs> yeah? Mic <Mike> drop. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah I'm going to be doing more art stuff and then the more serious side of things is like um, creative strategy and art direction for brands so um, yeah like everything from like copywriting to um, concepting ideas for campaigns um, being on set and art directing on set and like coming up with like storytelling and like rich meaningful content um, so yeah I'm doing that for like a couple of brands um, and then I'm also working on some product that's coming out soon but I can't tell you what it is but Ooh. it's um, again it's a continuation on from like my graphic stuff so yeah, with, with a brand, uh, not Nike, it's a different brand. Um, but I'm excited to, to launch that. See, that's so the exclusive. That'll be soon, yeah. That is the exclusive. <laughs> well, that yeah. is the TT, <laughs> TT Finley wrap up. Yeah. But before <laughs> we go, we're gonna play this or that. Oh, okay. Okay, so Chicago's or UNC's? Oof. Oh my God, that's such a hard one. I'm gonna say UNC's just because I just feel like I'd wear them more. I don't know. Are you more of a blue I feel like I'd, I don't know. I just feel like I'd wear like the blue and white more than like a black and red. Like, I feel like a black sneaker, I don't know. I, I, although if it is like the Jordan ones, the white Chicago's then maybe but I also am like really not a Jordan 1 person anymore Do you know that I've I literally don't feel like I sit them like I, f I feel like on smaller feet I just yeah I'm definitely what? like yeah definitely moved on from them I don't know why I prefer like a dunk to a Jordan to be fair okay well that was going to be one of yeah. my next ones yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. so um, dunks <laughs> But it no, has no, to be the actually, nice leather pair. Actually, to, to be honest, um, dunk low or one lows? Oof, dunk lows. Really? Yeah. Why? I just find like mm. ones, I feel like it's because the, the midsole is so thin mm. and like they are so like flat feeling, whereas I prefer a chunkier shoe. So I okay. think like that's why I prefer a dunk silhouette just because it's a bit chunkier and yeah. Okay, well, Got still on Jordan. Jordan 4s or Jordan 1s? Oof. Sorry, 4s. It's mine now. Yeah, Jordan. I was literally <laughs> listening to that earlier. 4s, um, definitely. Although they're not as comfy as 1s, but I think silhouette-wise, they just look sick. Do you think so? I, I find them really uncomfortable. I think it's in, all, yeah. it's in the smaller sizes. You yeah, know? probably. Because when I got yeah. the, a women's one and not a kid's one, mm. the, the, the fit was It feels better, different. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It felt so much better. Yeah. Um, why are you trying to get bad at the kids' feet? <laughs> I know, literally. Yeah, Why yeah. did we put ourselves through like, that? Yeah, I know, right? Um, okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Yeezys or Jordans? Yeezy or Jordans Ooh, as a brand? Jordan, yeah. I mean, I actually love Yeezy for the innovation that they're doing, mm -hmm. but having tried on a couple of pairs on foot, actually, apart from the Wave Runner, obviously I love the Wave Runner, yeah. but that's like, a, I feel like it's a standalone yeah, yeah. compared to every other Yeezy. But like... I feel like some of them look really weird on foot. The sizing's always off, as we know. Um, but I love all the innovation stuff they're doing, like with the foam runner and the materials they're using, and like just the fact that they're doing something that's never been seen before. Like the shapes yeah. and the silhouettes the are insane. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's like because super everything's sick. so new. Yeah, with it, them yeah. As well, though. So it's like, whereas Nike rely, like they made some iconic silhouettes. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes they, it's very hard to create a new silhouette when yeah. you literally hold all of, or 80% of the iconic yeah. sneakers yeah. in the industry. Yeah, mm. it's nostalgia with Nike. Like they literally yeah. just go back to the OGs all the time because they know that's what people like. And when they do, in that. They, yeah. Their, for their brand, it's their vintage mm. the ones that get the most. Always, uh, yeah. It's always the way. Iconic silhouettes. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, no, I think it's I think easier doing bits in the terms of that. Um, but in terms of wearing Yeezy I, or versus Jordan, I would yeah. wear more Jordan than Yeezy. What about when it comes to clothing? I actually love um, 
Jordan clothing. Like they've oh, their do. women's um, their women's range that they've been bringing yeah. out recently is really good. I've got like three of the same pair of trousers that they did. It's like the, the baggy cargo pants that everyone's wearing, but like they did but, um, but the, the, the Jordan, the Jordan version, <laughs> and it's it's nice because it like fits nicely around the waist, yeah. but like still has the bagginess. Um, good for and like even it. just like yeah, like the tops that they do. Like I like sort of like really sleek like sporty lycra kind of vibes and um they've just got some really nice stuff right so now more so for your style is yeah more, i would say so yeah okay. yeah definitely um okay two more superstars or stan smiths oh superstars definitely Why? i just wear them more i feel like again stan smiths are more they're more of like a flat they they are sleek but, kind of shoe yeah but don't find but, them more comfortable yeah i think I don't know to be fair like I actually love superstars I feel like sometimes if I wear them too long I'll get like a blister because they are so yeah, rigid yeah. but like I, I just feel like I could rock them with so many more things fair love a superstar fair. yeah and last but not least Nike or Adidas Nike or Adidas Nike obviously <laughs> obviously is that the real opinion yeah <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking I'm not even going to put pressure on the bag nah I'm not even going to put pressure on the bag but nah, listen I really do love there's so much Adidas I do love like yeah. I feel like all the stuff they've done with like Sean Weatherspoon's been yeah. sick and like I actually love the gazelles and like the comeback from like Spetsials and, and stuff yeah. like Sambas like all the football cars culture stuff that Adidas mm -hmm. is doing right now I'm 100% into that but like I think as a brand as a whole I'll always go back to Nike like they're my yeah well, you heard it here first <laughs> folks so TT where can people find you and what other than the exclusive product that's going to be dropping <laughs> do you know can you tell us when it will be or um i'm still in production and like i think production and design is all still happening like throughout july so, so i reckon it'll probably be right like then, august september i would when say the actual release. yeah when it actually releases so exciting. yeah i'm excited I but like you'll know which it. brand like it's a it's a well-known brand so i'm okay. hoping it goes well and yeah, it's gonna, no, it's gonna be good. It to yes, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be lit. We're gonna support it, you're gonna support it, and let them know where to find you. Yeah, yeah. so you find me on Instagram and TikTok at TT Finlay, just two T's. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it, I think. Well, <laughs> so um, we're gonna, you're gonna say one of your favorite quotes from one of your campaigns that you've done. Ooh, okay. Definitely. To leave them with a lasting thought. I think make sneakers gender neutral. I think that's where the future's going. So one three, we're gonna say it together. One. Yeah. Three, wait, one, <laughs> two, three. Make, make sneakers, sneakers gender, gender neutral. neutral. Yes. Peace. <laughs>